White blood cells or leukocytes are the only formed element that's actually a complete cell with a nucleus. Because remember, the red blood cell does not have a nucleus. So the normal count for white blood cells should be less than 1% of the total blood volume. And the number should be between 4,800 to almost 11,000 white blood cells per microliter. So there's a couple of interesting things that white blood cells do. The first thing is they actually have the ability to leave the capillaries by slinking themselves or squeezing themselves between the epithelial cells. And this process is called diapodesis. The other interesting thing that they do is once they're in the tissue spaces, they move kind of with this sluggish motion called amoeboid motion. And they're also attracted to bacteria or microbes through the emission of chemicals that those microbes release. And this is called positive chemotaxis. So when learning the different types of leukocytes, there's two different categories. There's ones that have grainy or cytoplasmic granules. Those are called neutrophils eosinophils and basophils, and there's also ones that don't contain these granules called agranulocytes. So you need to know the two categories and which fit into these categories. Now as far as learning the ones from most abundant to least abundant, it helps to know this mnemonic. Never let monkeys eat bananas, and that helps you remember the leukocytes from greatest to least. And we'll see this on our next slide, which shows a differential white blood cell count. And a differential white blood cell count is a common uh, test in medicine to be able to figure out what's wrong with the patient. So for example, if there's an increase in eosinophils, for example, it's likely that the patient is having an allergic or an asthmatic reaction to something. So you should know these general percentages that are listed on the slide. This slide is showing the um, images, the micrographs of various leukocytes. So the granulocytes are shown here and we see this grainy appearance again in the cytoplasm the neutrophils, the eosinophils, and the basophils. And the most common of all the leukocytes are the neutrophils, and they, along with the monocytes, are the most active phagocytes. And the agranulocytes are shown here, the lymphocytes and the monocytes. So the granulocytes, they are um, shown here in this slide and all of them are phagocytic to some degree, but remember that the neutrophils are the most phagocytic. The way I like to think of the neutrophils is to remember that they're the first on the scene. So if the scene of the crime is the bacteria or the microbe invasion, the neutrophils are going to be the first ones that show up. So when there's an acute bacterial infection or pus um, inflammation, there's going to be um, neutrophils that are present. And actually pus contains neutrophils because they've arrived there quickly to the site of the bacterial invasion. So about 50 to 70% of white blood cells are neutrophils. So our next slide is showing the eosinophils. And the eosinophils have a, um, usually have much darker granules. They usually have two lobes that are connected by a broad band and they can, um, they're usually going to be released when there's allergies or asthma, also parasitic infections like roundworm. So a patient that just comes back from the tropics that has, um, their body has been invaded by a the a round worm, for example, that's going to cause a big increase in eosinophils in their blood. The last two type, or the last type of granulocyte would be the basophils, 
and it's the most rare of all the types of leukocytes that we have. And it has small granules that contain histamine. Histamine is a major chemical that's released when inflammation occurs in the body. And basophils are very similar in their function to an immune cell called mast cells as well. The two types of agranulocytes are lymphocytes and monocytes. And the lymphocytes are going to be the part of the body, or specifically the leukocytes, that plays a role with immunity. The two types of lymphocytes are T lymphocytes, we call them T cells, and B lymphocytes called B cells. And B cells are important because they give rise eventually to antibodies. So um, when we get to the immune system, we'll be discussing these cells more in depth. And our last slide for the agranulocytes is the monocyte. And the monocytes, remember, are highly phagocytic, but these specifically develop into macrophages. So those both are easy to remember because they start with M, monocytes become the macrophages. And the next couple slides refer to the lineage or the development of um, leukocytes. And this is especially important for cancers of white blood cells, which are called leukemias. And you've probably heard of different types of leukemias, uh, things like myeloid leukemia, called this because it has to do with the um, development or the descendants of the myoblasts. And lymphocytic leukemias involve lymphocytes. They also can, um, they're named based on whether they're a quickly advancing type of leukemia or a slow advancing type of leukemia. So for example, there's acute myelocytic leukemia, abbreviated as AML, or acute lymphocytic leukemia, abbreviated as ALL. The last of the formed elements is called the platelet, and the platelet is a thrombocyte. It's really just a part of a cell. We refer to them as fragments of cells. So this original stem cell, referred to as the hemocytoblast, eventually develops into the thrombocyte, the platelet. And this table is summarizing the formed elements that we've been discussing. So our erythrocytes are biconcave in structure. And this is important because it allows for the greatest amount of surface area and the red blood cell can transport the max amount of oxygen and carbon dioxide. And the normal amount of red blood cells should be four to six million and its function is to transport oxygen and carbon dioxide. The white blood cells, the normal amount should be 4,800 to 10,800, less than 1% of the total blood count, so way below the millions of red blood cells. And you should be aware of the types of granulocytes, their major function, and the general percent of each. And the functions are listed over here in this last column. So if you see the function um, on a, for a test question or quiz question, you should be able to match it up with the name of the white blood cell. Then the last two agranulocytes are lymphocytes and monocytes. And their function is shown over here. So the immune response is the lymphocytes. And the monocytes, remember, differentiate into macrophages. Then the last of the formed elements would be the thrombocytes, the platelets. The general number should be between 150,000 to 400,000. And these small uh, cell fragments, their job is blood clotting. So whenever there's a small tear in a blood vessel, these particles are going to 
basically plug that hole.